welcome back Arbor League and today we have a very fun team and we're using a very underrated pick in the Jungle Cup, Claydol. Claydol is a ground psychic type that actually has surprisingly great coverage over the top meta picks like Vigoroth and Clodsire which also has similar coverage and beats Unovan Stunfisk that core breaks a lot of the teams making a core breaker itself. So like and subscribe and turn notifications on and let's take a look at Claydol in the Jungle Cup. Funnily enough, the team actually matches the background today. That was all an accident, I assure you. But we have Mantine on the lead, weak to Electric and Rock, covering that in the back with Ferrothorn and Claydol. Building this team, I knew Claydol was weak to all the other water types and mud boys and grass. So it was funny, even before adding Mantine when I put the Thorn on, the rating was already A for bulk and consistency. So Mantine makes a great addition. C-A-D-A -A is our rating today. But Claydol has good coverage. I think it just needs a bait move or mud shot, psycho cut, you know, something to generate energy faster as it only has nukes. But Mud Slap is similar to Razor Leaf as we're only focused on fast move pressure. So as for problems, Skarmory on the lead is really the only problem, but Mantine can handle that. And they can Brave Bird now or later. We've got chip coverage or shield pressure moves on all three Pokemon. So we want to see Fireflies on the lead too, like Talonflame. So we use Ferrothorn and Thunder to bait that out. The Thunder doesn't KO, but it does leave enough farm for Mantine or Claydol to come back in and farm down. Obviously, Darks and Licky in the back are pretty rough, but that's why we have Elemental coverage on Claydol. We haven't seen too many. There are some Mandibuzz around, but we can cover that with Mantine and Ferrothorn as well. We can handle neutral problems on the other two Pokemon as well. So Vigoroth coming in here, it's Claydol time to mud slot down so we might have to shield the third body slam here it looks like but Claydol is pretty bulky we do get that final shield from the Vigoroth we can let this go through there in uh, bullet seed farm down range we might have to take a few counters but they automatically swap as well and align their Steelix with our grass type so we're resisting the dragon tails here but Steelix does have access to Crunch, which is neutral and could debuff us. They also have access to Earthquake, so they're building up a lot here, and I'm getting kind of worried, but I think Ferrothorn can tank one of whatever. We're getting that Steelix pretty low, looks like, so I will opt to let this go through. I don't think the Vigoroth has much energy, but they full send the Earthquake, so now I'm getting actually kind of worried that we're in counter down range, but we're able to farm down Steelix and leave with a move. The opponent realizes this, and we take that game. So hopping into the next one, we've got a Flyer Mirror here, which is pretty good. We can handle this with Mantine. We've got Thunder on Ferrothorn there, which is neutral, but it's not stabbed. So we're going to stay in here with Mantine. Mantine is our bulk, right? We're uh, going to stay in here, try to take uh, Sky Attack or Moon Blast, get to that super effective Ice Beam. And we're either going to grab a shield or the Altair is going to go down four times effective. They let it go through, so that's pretty good for us. And they come in with their counter user. So we can see the wind con a mile away here. I'm going to get to the aerial ace just before they get to their rock slide. I don't think I'm going to shield. Uh, Body Slam doesn't take us out from this range. They're uh, opting to let that go through. So that makes our Mud Slap down a little better. They're just getting to that Body Slam there, which allows us to get to that aerial ace. So just for some chip damage here, but they haven't used any shields yet. Vigoroth is pretty low, pretty good for us. We can just come in with Claydol here and take whatever. The Rock Slides are resisted, the Counters are resisted, so that's really good coverage up against Vigoroth here. The Body Slam chips away, does whatever, you know, it tickles us a little bit. But we're able to Mud Slap down and we're just left with a Talon. So this is pretty rough. They are going to shield absolutely everything here. They uh, haven't seen our Ferrothorn yet. But lowering their attack really does nothing here, right? Because they could just reboost it again with that flame charge, which we have to shield. So there's pretty no win con here. I think I'm just trying to build up to that Scorching Sands and get their last shield, but we're not able to do that. I'm going to shield up here, and hopefully we survive a couple incinerates. And hopefully Thunder from this uh, range with some Mud Slaps here will take them out. I don't think we're going to be able to survive one more move here. So yeah, they're going to outpace us, and that's going to be a good game. Ferrothorn taking four times super effective damage to the Flame Charge that's already boosted. So we take that loss. 
popping into the talent flame here this is where we want to see it as i was saying earlier because we resist the fire moves on minute team here so they can brave bird and we can uh realign if they dip so we are going to bait it's not really baiting here ice beam does neutral as well so we get that chip damage off it's pretty good now they are in thunder range if we have to they just gonna go for the flame charge here. It's pretty good for us. So just gonna full send that next ice beam and either get the shield or pretty low on the talon flame here. Ice beam doesn't quite KO, so they will opt to shield. I might actually show this next one up the opponent over farming massively here. So yeah, in case this is a boosted fly, which it is, we are able to cause the CMP tie shield ourselves and either go for their last shield or KO. So they opt to shield it up. Sounds good to me. So we are thinking, yeah, we're going to outpace them here or go for the farm down. So the opponent, I know they threw a lot, but they need two more incinerates and they get farmed down in the middle of their second one. So just get into that uh, next flame charge there, but they swap in the Sandy Ghast, which eats a super effective ice beam. So Mantine having that coverage for that next Pokemon that comes in and this is okay because they knew they weren't going to farm down. So we lose the CMP tie, but waste a whole lot of their energy able to come in with the uh, Feral Thorn here. We do take neutral to ground moves, but not too worried here. Will they go Shadow Ball? No, just go for the Scorching Sands. They don't get the debuff and the Clotsire comes in. So here we go. The uh, more spear of the ground types. We will be coming in with that Claydol. Just getting some chip damage up if we have to. And Clodsire is just going to get eaten up here. They're going to go for an Earthquake. Yeah, we get tickled by that. Claydol does not care. And the opponent realizes that and concedes the match. So able to encounter a Wigglytuff in the next match. So we want to safe swap the Claydol in this. I think just trying something here wasn't too sure. We want to realign that with the Ferrothorn. But we're going to go for that Rock Tomb there. Try to lower their attack at least. They're not throwing just yet. An Icy Wind would take us out. So we will have to shield that up if we want to preserve this. We did get their attack drop. So the Charms are doing less. I will get to that Scorching Sands. I think they do go for the Disarming Voice for whatever reason. They should go for the Icy Wind in this scenario because we are a ground type. But either or, we get to that Scorching Sands and the Charmer will double shield as usual, reading the opponent like a book. We will get Charmed down, but we can safely come in here with Ferrothorn. We didn't get any debuffs on the Scorching Sands, but we resist the Charms. And I don't think they're gonna throw the Icy Wind, to be honest, if they threw the Disarming Voice at us just to uh, for some stab damage we'll see here yeah just gonna go for the disarming voice we can fully farm down but we are able to get this power whip off on whatever came in there it's just the vigoroth getting that chip damage off makes this mantine match a little bit more tolerable too right so if they throw the rock site it does a lot of damage as it's super effective but they bait us with the body slam we we're able to get to that aerial ace i could have gotten to that ice beam because an aerial ace does not ko here but it does get us pretty low. We can get some farm if we have to, but they get farmed down. There's still two Pokemon left. They catch and suck for whatever reason, but there's a Talon Flame. So can we win this one actually? They have to fly here. So this is getting pretty risky. Just go straight Ice Beam just because there are no shields left. And they over farm and we get to that Aerial Ace. So I don't think this will be taking out the Talon Flame. Barely does not. And we try to catch and they throw so we almost threw the game here as they could have farmed us all the way down but they throw a little bit of energy and here is going to be games because they come with the boosted fly we almost threw the game there but man team living on one hp and a dream up against the vigoroth here which is looking pretty good we got the flyer up against the counter user which is where we want to see it I mean, we want to see it on Claydol, but we can't swap out because we don't want that realigned with our Steel type right. So we are going to get hit with Rock Slide. Rock Slide does hurt, but we can tank one. We don't shield it up this time because we are at full health, and we want to get a little bit of more chip damage done on that Vigoroth, right? I mean, they can counter us down into Body Slam range, so they don't have to go for the full Rock Slide twice. So we will see the shield from Vigoroth here. We can shield ourselves because I think I might be able to get to that aerial ace there. They overfarmed a ton. Actually, I'm going to uh, let it go, I think. Yeah, just come in with Claydol here. There's no point. We've got shield advantage. We've done what we wanted to do. Body slams aren't going to hurt Claydol too much, right? We are pretty bulky. Body slam just tickles. 
Play-Doh, not a problem. We can mud slap all the way down, but they decide to swap out and perfect for us as we get the Rock Tomb off is still neutral and lower their attack, 100% guaranteed. Come in here, and I know we don't have any steel type moves on Ferrothorn here, but we want uh, the Shadow Ball to do less, right? So, I mean, we still have to shield the second one, but we're good here because we've got shield advantage on them and a Power Whip. As you can see, Trevenant's kind of glassy, so two Power Whips actually threaten uh, Trevenant here. So we're gonna shield up this next Shadow Ball because even debuff that hurt a lot, right? So they don't bait us, they go full send. So I think we're actually able to farm all the way down. Yep, Bullet Seed resisted farm down. Pretty good. Come out with uh, one and a half power ups, but there's a Gliscor in the back. So Gliscor will only be taking neutral to this. We uh, getting pretty dicey here just because of that. Vigoroth is still in the back. We need a power up for that. But we get the next shield from Gliscor, so we're still at a shield advantage. Sounds good to us. I'm gonna let this go through, and I know uh, mud slaps are resisted. We have to watch for the catch as well. I want that rock tomb to land on the Gliscor. They catch at the wrong time because they don't know how to count. I guess not counting, uh, try to count mud shots instead of mud slaps. So we're getting hit with an aerial ace, but they're almost at two. And I'm not sure if this rock tomb KOs because rock tomb, not the greatest move in terms of damage, but it does lower attack. Doesn't quite KO score here. So we will be hit with a debuffed aerial ace, but from this range, we are done for. So GG's to that opponent. Core breaking <laughs> instead. Getting a lick of tongue for a rewards. So even despite that last loss, not too bad of a rewards. Getting 12, 15, 15 on that, not uh, a little bit over a rank one as it would be 7, 15, 15, but GG's in the first set. Hopping into our next set of battles here. We've got Mantine into a Ferrothorn, pretty neutral lead. But as you can see, they can hit us back for super effective thunders. So I will go for this neutral ice beam here, Ferrothorn, part grass and steel. Let's it go through, which makes the mirror better, but we bait out the Talon Flame. So pretty good here. We've got the thunder coverage. Let's see how much it does. Does not KO, and they throw, which is good for us. So they don't uh, come out of this match with any energy, but as I said earlier, it does leave enough farm for Mantine here to come back in. Not quite getting the farm down there. They're only going to be making the flame charge, so we can let that go through. But they've got a move ready to go on Ferrothorn, so we got to shield that up as well. So they don't have to go Thunder here. We are in Power Whip range. We are going to go for the neutral Aerial Ace, just because we can go for multiple of them. Get their first and second shield, but they let it go through. Totally okay with us. I think they can actually farm down here. So will they make the next power whip? They do not. They swap out the last minute, but a swapper comes in trying to catch an aerial ace, eating the ice beam, but they shield that up and not knowing that we've got a claydol in the back. So bad news for us. But the opponent throws the earthquake when they should have thrown the super effective hydro cannon. Swapper gets taken out by the scorching sands and the opponent is forced to throw. So we throw, but the opponent throws and we take that game. Hopping into a choir target here. So we come in with the clay doll because we have two responses for that. I mean, we could have come in with Ferrothorn and bait out the Talon Flame, but a Shadow Cradilly comes in. Nothing here is gonna one shot here, so they will opt to let that go through. Uh, Cradilly actually kind of, you know, moderate bulk. So, so because we lower their attack, they do get extra farm there. So they will get a couple of rock slides off here, but Shadow, despite being debuffed, still really freaking hurts. <laughs> so we will have to shield up the second one here. Hopefully we can farm down. Yes, we can. So we come out with a couple of aerial aces, not too bad. Or a super effective ice beam onto the ground type. The opponent lets it go through and we quickly swap to preserve and we encounter a charmer. So Ferrothorn will be having lunch breakfast, lunch, and dinner here as we resist the charms and you know when Sunfist cannot touch us either. We just have to come out with uh, two power whips here, shielding up that icy wind because we do have to shield up one of them. But despite being resisted, we will be able to take out that uh, Unovan Stunfisk. So where does the opponent want to use their shield? Probably on the Unovan Stunfisk, but we catch a mud bomb. Our timer was up in time. We're able to get to that air ace. Hopefully the opponent was not counting, which they were, but they are getting pretty low because they are forced to throw here as they would have gotten farmed down. But one more bullet seed takes them out. 
So I was uh, recorded the battle late there. Uh, Obama Snow into a flyer, so they swap, I swap, and we are having breakfast, lunch, and dinner again <laughs> with the lanterns. We absolutely wall this. We still have to come out with some energy here, so I shouldn't completely have bubbled that one. And I also don't want the Obama Snow to have a lot of energy there, uh, but we're able to get to back to back power whips here, and despite being resisted, the Obama Snow still has to build up. Uh, power whip number two come in here and as you can see power whip number three is actually going to uh, threaten the KO from Obama Snow. So they're actually going to be throwing here just to expend some of their energy. So we can come back in with the flyer. So we don't want to come in with that ground type. They're getting pretty low and just going to go for the uh, icy wind debuff here. So debuff to whatever's in but it's a Claude's Ire and that is why we have Claydol. Claydol is going to have breakfast, lunch and dinner today with this Claude's Ire. So we can take an Earthquake no problemo here, but the opponent actually goes Stone Age for whatever reason, trying to bait us, but it does not matter. Those Mud Slaps are just shredding the Claude's Ire. Earthquake tickles us again as we can fully farm down. And the Obama Snow comes back into farm down, but we resisted Mud Slap. Farm him down instead. Talon Flame on the lead, which is exactly where we want to see it, resisting those incinerates. We're gonna go for that neutral ice beam there. The town flame part flying decides to shield that up because they want to get this brave bird off, I would imagine. So we're still resist the incinerates, but we're getting pretty low. I should have shielded that up, but because their defense is down, they have to shield up an aerial ace. Sounds good to me. Two shields down. We can come in here and mud slap down despite it being resisted. It's uh, only one time resisted, but their defense is down and they still outpace us. So we are gonna have to expend two shields in return. But they come in with the Obama Snow and they get to the Weather Ball first. So unfortunately, we actually survive the Weather Ball. So does this Rock Tomb KO in return? It does not. So Rock Tomb, not the greatest move, like I said, in terms of uh, damage. But it does lower attack so that these, what I thought was a Weather Ball, going to do less. But the opponent Energy Balls, for whatever reason, trying to lower our defense, does not work. I should have farmed down because of that. But because now there's a Vigorette that comes in. <laughs> And we're only able to get to one power rip, but the opponent catches that as well. So we eat shit on this one. But we're going to try to go for some redemption up against a Wizcash here. So Wizcash going to be swapping out into the meme team. So I knew when somebody released this, I knew exactly what it was. We have a Wizcash double poison bulker in the back. So expecting that Tentacruel and Playdoll is just going to go to town. The Brian, not the greatest move. We can let one go through. She's going to shield the next one up and come out with some energy here. I think letting the second go through. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's still resisting the poison, able to fully farm Toxapex down in the zeros. So I'm totally okay because all three of our Pokemon beat all three of theirs. Getting a shield with that Scorching Sands, no debuff, but we get farmed down. So we can totally come in with uh, Ferrothorn or Mantine here. So we're going to come in, bait out that Tentacruel, reading the opponent like a book. Chipping away with that Aerial Ace, not going to be throwing that Ice Beam out of Water type. No, thank you. We're going to be letting the first Skull go through, but they actually bait us with uh, Acid Spray. <laughs> Totally okay with me. I mean, all three of our Pokemon can deal with this, right? I mean, we're just chipping away with Aerial Ace. That's all we want to do is get the Tentacruel very low. Getting their second shield sounds good to me. Getting out paste uh, to the next Acid Spray. Again, not going to be bugged at all because we have revealed that we have a Ferrothorn. So the opponent still playing this out, not top lefting. Scald does not get the debuff, and we farm down and get the Power Whip off on the Wizcash. Meme team, get out of here. Ferrothorn takes the game on that last battle so some redemption in that last match pretty fun teams up against some other pretty fun teams getting that legendary phalanx as a reward as well let's go so claydol in the jungle cup is definitely a fun pick forgotten and underrated we only have a couple days until all three leagues are available so if you do have a clay doll buried in your rank somewhere i suggest running at least one set with it just to have some fun before jungle cup is gone if you're enjoying the content leave a comment and tell me what you think and don't forget to like subscribe and turn notifications on it really helps me out it keeps me in the algorithm and lets you know when i post because there will be much more pokemon go content to come but that's all i've got for today guys thank you again everyone so much for watching I've been Herbert Randy, keep your sticks on the ice, and I'll see you about the next one.